Welcome to the DMX OMF tutorial series. In this installment, we'll be reviewing how to create new parts within the Inventory Management module. Starting from the desktop, we'll launch the OMF application with this shortcut. Now you see this actually opens up in a browser. It's accessible through any place that you have an internet connection. And the first thing we'll do is log in with our username and password and access the system by clicking Next. That'll take us directly to our welcome screen. You can see across the top it says Welcome Back, Jason Fullen, so you can confirm that you're logged in as the correct user. Over to the left-hand nav, we'll click on Warehouse, and the first thing you'll notice here is a row of tabs come across the top. Now it's important to note that these tabs can be added and deleted and customized uh, per user's preference. The way I've customized these tabs actually allows us multiple access points to the Part Add Edit screen, either through the tabs or the left-hand nav through Inventory Management, and then Part Add Edit, which will then take us to the Product Management page. From here, we can search for existing products, either by product code or by keywords within the description of the product itself. We can also filter products by active or inactive or both. We're going to go ahead and create a new product by clicking this link which will transport us to the Parts Setup page. The first region you'll see here is the Product Managers region. Here you'll select an individual that is responsible for this specific part. For example, the system will automatically send an email to this individual if the inventory on this part is low, needs to be reordered, or has to have an order approved. So I'll go ahead and select myself in this case. The next three regions provide you the opportunity to define your part itself. A product code, a product name, and a product description. Product code is an alphanumeric code to identify the product within your inventory, up to 50 characters. Then the product name is a brief description of the product. And this is actually used on most pages to display the part itself. And then a product description, you can actually go further in depth of a description of the product if you want. The unit cost represents the cost of procurement for the part itself. Setting a reorder point enables the system to automatically generate an email to the product manager or an automatic order of this part when the inventory reaches the level set. Quantity to reorder defines the level of inventory that needs to be ordered to replenish this product. Max quantity limits the quantity of this part that can be ordered through the internal inventory store whereas the store max quantity, if you were to be using a public store through the web, would limit that. The unit of measure defines how this product will be stored and fulfilled. It's a completely customizable drop-down based on the user's preferences. And the order quantity multiple defines the quantity a user can order this product in. While size and color don't necessarily apply to a prospectus, our system is designed to handle more than just literature fulfillment. So if you were selling, say, t-shirts, this would come in handy. Used mostly in reporting and budgeting, Cost Center defines which cost center within your company is responsible for this product. You see here I've got them broken down into individual regions, but this is a customizable drop-down so it can match your company's needs specifically. We'll go ahead and select Eastern Region for this. Division allows for further definition of responsibility for this product. Here I've got it broken down into individual departments, but it could just as easily be territories or other office locations. Shelf Life allows the system to track perishable goods. Product group and product type are both customizable drop-downs that are used for the searching for and reporting of individual products. You can see I've defined these to match our prospectus needs, but they can be, as I said before, customized for any use. You can also assign a tariff or harmonize codes for use on a commercial invoice. The revision field allows you to track how many times a part has been added to or changed. So say, for instance, this prospectus had been edited or changed three times. We could throw a Rev3 on there just to delineate that. But since it's a new product, we'll just put in a zero. Assigning a release date to a product will allow the system to automatically hide the product's availability until the assigned release date comes. So we'll go ahead and select today. The retail price and store retail price define the price associated with this part within the internal inventory store as well as a public web storefront. Lead time represents how long it typically takes to procure the product and is used in reorder notification emails to the product manager. You can also define the weight of a product for use mostly in the public storefront. 
expiration date works similarly to the release date, except this date will tell the system when to pull this part's availability out of the active inventory. Minimum quantity represents the minimum that needs to be ordered through the internal inventory system, and the store minimum quantity represents the minimum for a web front store. And then you can also enter a customs value for use on a commercial invoice. Version is yet another way to further flag this product. Whereas storage type can be used to define different types of storage like secure, non-secure. Uh, you could also use this to describe different storage locations, different warehouses. The following flags define parameters for the ordering process. This limits the orderability of a product to only users with admin permissions or higher. This allows the product to be automatically replenished based on usage. This allows the product to be backordered. Electronic fulfillment will allow the product to be ordered as an e-document. Digital asset will list this part as a variable data piece during the ordering process. Order approval required requires admin permission levels to approve an order of this part. POD will make this product available for print on demand. And PODC allows this to be a customizable print on demand. State restrictions dictates which states this part will be restricted to. Only users that have access to that state on their user records will see this part as orderable. A part can have multiple state restrictions. So say you only want people in Illinois to be able to order this part. You would just select that and then hit submit. And the system will take care of the rest. Restriction codes are client-defined restrictions that a user must have in their user record to be able to order this part. A part can have multiple restriction codes. As you can see, I've defined mine here as departments. So a user must be in one of these departments in order to order this prospectus. Much like on the internet, you can enter keywords to further define this part and assist people when they're trying to find it to order it. Placed items indicate a product code that has been replaced. If a user orders the replaced item on an order screen, the replacement part will automatically be added instead. DMX OMF is capable of integrating with outside systems. This region allows you to reference an external system for this part. Based on monthly use averages, resupply months should tell you how long your available inventory should last, whereas the threshold quantity should keep your forward pick station properly stocked. The common field provides you an opportunity to leave any comments or notes associated with this part to be saved in the file. And the POD instructions below can be used to add information to the POD template to be used for the printing of POD items. So if we want to make sure that we always send this in a specific envelope, uh, we could add that and that will be passed along uh, to the warehouse when an order is processed. Over to the right, you can also include a page count, which can be used for POD items. If the item needs to be reviewed, how long it might be need to be reviewed for. If it doesn't need a review, you can check those flags here. You can also check a flag here to make sure it's included in all orders. If you want to allow it in the public store, you can check that. And also, you can, of course, make the product inactive. Once you're all set, you click the Submit button down at the bottom. You'll get this little message here that the item has been saved. And we'll go ahead and redirect right back to that page by clicking this link. You can see right here, here is the item saved. Now say you want to edit something on this item right away. You just select the field that you'd like to edit, and you enter in the proper data. So if we want to make this retail price $5, you go ahead and just change that there. Once again, click Submit at the bottom of the page, and you can see that it's now again been saved. So we'll click back to that item. And you can see right here in the retail price has actually been saved now as $5. So now our prospectus is completely set up and ready to be ordered by users in the system. Thank you for watching. Please visit our website or call us today.